Hello. It's time for another What It Does video, and this time I'm taking a look at the Sound Toys Decapitator plugin, their saturation plugin, all that lovely goodness that we have from there. First of all, though, a quick thank you to Eric Protz, who left a message on my previous Better Maker video, who mentioned the EQ analyzer, which I'm now using instead of the Waves Q clone. So thank you, Eric, for that mention. I'm enjoying using that so far. Right, let's get into it. So here we've got the EQ along the top and then the lovely saturator underneath. And at the moment it's on bypass. So as you see, we have a flat signal going through there on the EQ curve and turning it on on the a setting of the style, we get that, which is quite a change. And the biggest change is that we've dropped almost 2 dB on volume. Nice little top end, little addition, and a roll off on the sub. Where are we? So at the top there, we can, in the middle, we can see that's around 50 hertz. It starts going off. And we'll just play through these styles to see the different shapes that these apply. Ooh, now I often end up using this one, which is understandable. It gives a nice little sheen on the top end going up there. Not much has changed between those two on the low end. So let's quickly go back to there and then back to the E. So it's that nice, oh, once it settles down, nice little roll off onto N. And quite a bit different. Um, understandable, actually, because I'm used to hearing this one E being brighter and N uh, being a little more dull. So we've got a nice little roll off on that top end. And a little bump going on in this middle section and uh, a little more weight in the bottom. So let's just compare, compare that to the E. So you can see that's E. And then definitely, if you want to... Um, a less bright tone, that's good. And onto T. And overall, a very big boost, which um, that's understandable because these seem to get louder or more distorted uh, when I'm using them. So it's, it's interesting to see that that's what this does. Um, similar to E, where we've got this little top end, a roll off, but more of a bump here around the one to 200 Hertz. And P, wow, that's actually, pff, even does more. We're almost getting up to 4 dB um, up here in the one, two, yeah, two, 300 area. And quite a steep roll off going on there. I'd actually quite like that to have been more comparable to the others, which would be about there to show the shape. And interesting, I think we could do is saving. <laughs> So now, if I go from N, or well, no, let's choose E, actually, it's a similar shape. So the curves will be a similar level. If I go to P, yeah, that's better. It's more comparable. And interesting to see what that sounds like when you're actually using it, because if it's going to be louder, that obviously sounds better, because that's how our ears work. Um, so a bit deceptive. Uh, it's interesting to see that. So when I now select uh, the different styles and the T and P do get louder and more, almost sound more distorted, but um, I'm going to be pulling that down just as a comparison. Interesting to try that. Oh, no, I've got to do that as a T, haven't I? There we go. Right, so let's reset that on auto and put it back to the basic A. And we'll go through the bump, the, or the thump rather, which is this little switch here. And that basically adds a nice little sub on that point. Turn it back off so you can see that. Back on. So a little bit of weight in the bass. Then we have the low cut, which unsurprisingly is a low cut filter going on here, or a high pass. And that goes all the way up to one kilohertz. So you could, I rarely use these because I'm using an EQ um, whenever I work on something. So uh, interesting to have it there though. Always handy within one plugin. 
So we bring that all the way back down to the bottom. So that's your low cut. And the high cut will just nip over to there. So same again. Just going to add a nice little high cut all the way down to one kilohertz. Quite a subtle roll off. And then you have the steep button next to it. So that's going to make it more steep. Actually takes the whole volume down with it as well. At that point, that's quite a quite a change. Now with that steep on, is that going to raise? The, yeah, I guess so. The level is going to be going up. The higher you go, that's nice. Quite an aggressive curve. And then in the middle, you have a standard tone knob, which is going to tilt. Yep. So if we go darker, basically taking down the highs and lifting the lows and then we go back that center and then we're going to raise the highs and lower the lows so that's all that's doing if you want to change the tone of what you're working on and reset that uh, that's all off and the mix button just to if i pull that all down to dry hopefully that should oh it's not fully off yep to show that dry is completely flat as it is when it's disengaged or bypassed. And the drive, interesting just to see what that does in terms of shape. It's gonna get a bit messy, I'm sure. I think some nice distortion, but it's basically making it louder, louder. And then it's gonna go, yikes. Interesting curve of when you're on full drive there. Very messy, I do like that. And then the punish button, which if you're used to using decapitator, really does punish the sound. And that again, that can be cranked up. And let's just be silly and see what it does. Nice, like that. All right, well, there you have it. That is what the Sound Toys decapitator does to the EQ curve. Hope you found it useful. See you next time. Bye-bye. Their saturation... Duh, can't...